And then um, toward the end, um, you don't have to jump off when I cut off the stream. Okay. Okay, we are on. So let me do a couple of quick things and uh, let people jump on. And I'm going to share the stream here. So on those of you who are hopping on, just give me a moment. You know the drill. Waiting. Yeah. Let's see here. So Leo, you say you know the drill, but this is my first time doing a Facebook Live. So oh. this is uh, this is uh, uh, new for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. But you're a veteran, so like, can we put you on any stream you like? Good. <laughs> <laughs> No worries about that. Let's see here. Edit. Hey folks, if you're coming on, we're just getting set up. So give us a minute. I'm trying to make sure that you, Van, are tagged properly. Save. And then Some sharing, share. share. Almost there. Share. Okay, let's go. All right. All right. Let's see who we have on. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, happy Tuesday to you. Tuesday is a very exciting Tuesday here, and um, we're in the summer. So uh, it's heating up here in my office. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> you see some sweat, you know, coming up. It's because I'm in <laughs> sunny Southern California. We're having like the best weather ever. Like we're in the upper 70s, maybe 80 mm -hmm. here. Um, I'm here in Irvine and uh, Van is in Costa Mesa, so we're very close. Um, so let me get started as you guys are jumping on. Um, as you all know, my name is Leo Chen and this is Wisdom Club Live where we inspire unlimited possibilities. And um, I have Van Trin here today and I'm super excited to have her because she's got a very unique um, uh, journey and what she does in helping people, helping our community. Um, it's a it's a very um, unserved um, population, I think, that she serves because it's such a need. I, I see it as such a need because um, everybody needs it, I think, um, but not everybody has resources to be able to do it. And so I want her to talk about that. But before we all get started on that, um, I want uh, Van to introduce herself and then tell us about her, um, where she's from, her upbringings, and um, and kind of just give us some idea what her life journey has kind of brought her to this this place that we're at, at we're at now. <laughs> so go awesome. ahead. Uh, thanks, Leo. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's really uh, great to, to do this and to share my story. Uh, so um, I'm from Southern California, Long Beach. And so born and raised here, so I'm used to this wonderful weather all the time. <laughs> Hope yeah. no one's jealous. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's pretty nice out here. Uh, so my background, I think I have more or less a typical background. Um, uh, first generation 
to, you know, first generation uh, from parents uh, that came from Vietnam and, uh, you know, went to school, did the usual thing, uh, you know, uh, with them, you know, we have to go get, get our college education. So I did that and went down the typical path, which is go get a job, right? And uh, go into the corporate world. And I spent a good amount in the corporate world and, and, I, and, I, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed what I learned, uh, um, being in different industries like finance, the mortgage industry and um, healthcare as well. Um, just building software across the different, um, different industries. And it's been great. But what I realized towards uh, more recently is I just always had, you know, as uh, parents that, you know, like we, you want to create a safety, safety net, you know, and have that steady income, have that, you know, um, you know, get the job, make sure you have savings, retirements, et cetera, right? I completely understand the, the need for all that. But for myself, um, I've always had that entrepreneurial itch, you know, start my own business, my own ideas, all, all this other fun stuff. And so a couple of years back, while it wasn't necessarily the direction I want, wanted to go in, I was going to go just get an normal corporate job when I came back to Orange County, uh, I made the decision to uh, join a startup and kind of go down that path of um, still working in tech, but working, um, actually building a business from scratch. And so that, that when you go against the direction of what, I guess, what uh, you're typically uh, used to, and especially the security behind um, a corporate job. It, it's tough, it's not easy by any means. And so uh, I, I was part of a startup and then I decided to do my own, which is uh, where we are now. And my company's Prisma, and we're a gaming company building interview games uh, for, candidates and companies to come together and interact and provide data insights behind interaction, um, as well as create meaningful in, um, job placement. Uh, and so that's, that's my company in a nutshell. And so, yeah, it's been a very interesting and still continues to be an interesting journey, just kind of learning the ins and outs of the gaming world and um, the HR space. Yeah, I, I definitely want to dig into, you know, the a little bit more nitty gritty of that to, to give people like the full experience of what it what it is that, you know, that is that your company as well as how it helps people. Um, but before we do that now, so you said, um, I picked up that you worked, um, I heard mortgage industry, um, mm -hmm. and then also tech. And so mm -hmm. you kind of work through uh, some corporate companies through that, right? Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. um, there was a startup company that you work with um, along yeah. the way, is that right? Yeah, so uh, software, I don't know if anyone's familiar with software, uh, it operates the same when you build it. You're just building it for a different customer base and you're um, building in a different industry with different regulations. So uh, what makes working in technology so great, at least my type of role, is that you can um, jump industries as long as you're all you're doing is gaining more industry no, uh, industry knowledge of a different space, and you're just taking the same um, process and putting it elsewhere. And so um, that's allowed me to jump industries and learn new industries. And so the uh, startups that I was a part of it was a music industry, which I learned a lot about. And I like learning things about different industries because you get to know, when you learn about technology, you get to know the industry very well. You learn the ins and outs of the business, you learn you know, um, how people operate in it. And so you just get to learn so much. So uh, that was uh, one of the industries that I was um, a part of. Yeah, I think you, you're, you're absolutely right. And I felt the same way too when I worked for a tech company for over 15 mm. years. Um, mm. I stayed put for most of that time mm. so um, and got to kind of sink my teeth into a more specific vertical. But you're mm. absolutely right. I can always talk to people, um, even now, um, still that um, when you've worked in tech and you've worked, you, you pretty much have every industry open to you, like whatever exactly. you wanted to do. So, yeah. you know, um, I guess I guess it's equivalent to like if you worked in finance, well, you could have worked in finance and any company. Every company needs finance of some sort, right? Yeah. Everybody, True. you know, will do their own finance of some mm -hmm. sort. If you talk mm -hmm. about more of the the you know the private uh, people um, versus like commercial and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, tech is, I've always seen tech that way. So I love what, like what you said, is that you get to learn a lot about the industry just based on, you know, tech is all the same. It's all zeros and ones mm -hmm. and we're all writing code and we're all exactly. you know, just like if then statements, like mm -hmm. a, million of them, a million of them, right? Yep. <laughs> and so, um, and um, uh, I think that it's absolutely true. And I think nowadays everybody should have a really solid, tech foundation for them mm -hmm. to excel in any industry unless they can hire somebody to do all that tech for them or they have a team right. of people to do the tech for, for them um, but, yeah. but still having the skills is really important i you know as, as you know and everybody else out there know i work in real estate and one of the biggest advantages is that i had so much you know tech experience that literally i can pick up whatever software whatever niche whatever mm -hmm. um tools I can and just plug and play into my workflow into my business into how I either communicate or how I document or how uh, how we do contracts I mean all that mm -hmm. stuff is like easy for me to navigate um, as opposed mm -hmm. to I'll just make an example my mom has been in real estate for like 40 years and she has never done any of that tech and um, and so it's a huge struggle for her you mm -hmm. know sometimes she's just like I don't know where my email went like you know yeah yeah like she can't find it and what do you do like it's such a basic mm -hmm. thing right like what do you do right. like i can't find it i don't know how to find it i don't know where it is i don't know why you know it doesn't come up right right and so this is like really really difficult and so having having had helped her in some mm -hmm. through some of those things i realized like what a kind of a handicap it, it could be for a lot of people yeah. who don't know and and it, everybody ranges like it's such a big range mm -hmm. right absolutely basic things such as like email and browser and stuff like that all the way up to like you know a custom you know um applications for just for that industry only right so, so i i just want to highlight that because uh, it i think we all tend we could like take that for granted for those of us who've been in tech right well, and I and I honestly say I don't know social media that well. <laughs> so, you know, as much as I'm great at different software applications and operational applications, and I can speak speak to those, you know, there's always something that you can learn. Um, and that's the um, the beauty of technology. It's always evolving. And so that's what it's allowed me to do is be adaptable. Right. Right. Adapting to new environments, adapting to new spaces yeah. and tools. And for sure, like you said, like um, a lot of people don't know social media. Mm -hmm. um, because and, and they don't want to do social media for whatever their own personal reasons or business reasons or, or whatnot. And um, I don't think you need to be fully successful to know social media. It's just like it's just like tech, like you if you hire somebody to do it and if you want to do it, but you didn't want to do it yourself, yeah. you can totally do it. Um, but you don't have to know social media if that's not uh, a space where you you get all your exposure and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So um, businesses, you know, business to business, you don't really need social media, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's only when you start to do the consumer stuff, uh, then then that that becomes um, becomes a need. Yeah. So um, so you're yeah, like all of us, it doesn't matter how many years you've been in in tech, like there's it's never ending. It keeps like your brain going, like you're challenged. Keeps your brain going, exactly. Yeah, I want to so, continue to be challenged. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I love about tech too. Like yeah. it never it never ends. But mm -hmm. I do want to say that like all the years I've been in tech. And like I used to test every single operating system that was coming out mm -hmm. on beta that week, every mm -hmm. you know major software, whether it's Office or whatever, um, every year. And we got into um, Linux and every yeah. you know new updates and stuff like that. All that mm -hmm. stuff I was doing, all that stuff. We get to a point where you're like, okay, I know how this goes now. You know, yeah. when a new software comes, that these going to change, that going to change, and you just get to a point where like throw me any new software it doesn't matter it right. doesn't matter what platform it's on i'll figure it out we just push yeah. buttons we figure out the flow and you become um, a problem solver yeah, yeah. yeah. we, we, we yeah. make it we just make it work and we yeah we know the foundation and that's what i mean like after you've been in tech for so many years you pick up whatever and you can like adapt but then the learning becomes the industry like you said exactly mm -hmm. you know, because that industry you know, it's going to be, it's going to be diff different, like, a, like you were saying, like in healthcare or in mortgages, mm -hmm. are they going to be different? The funny thing right. I think about mortgages mm -hmm. and real estate in general, like in many ways, it's so far behind in technology in some ways, right? It, Do you agree? It, it is. I mean, I, I think um, 
with heavily regulated industries, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're going to move a lot slower, right? It's a cruise ship as opposed to that speedboat. Uh, so, you know, there's just a lot more hoops and red tape to go through. Mm -hmm. um, but the but the bottom line, when you think about any type of software, any technology embedded into, they're all embedded into different industries, is uh, what problem are they trying to solve? And hopefully what human problem are they trying to solve? Right, because that's what we're that's what they're there for. It's a it, in essence a tool, right? How do we want to utilize that tool to um, operate better in, in the industry or create efficiencies, whatever it is that you're you're there to what it's there to do it, um, for that main purpose. So that's why I like uh, I don't necessarily think of technology working in technology is uh, related to the code, uh, the frameworks, right? It's more about the business problem and that's kind of where i've always um, worked in from a product management standpoint is straddling the business as well as understanding the technology and marrying those together to create a bridge and then to solve a problem absolutely i, I like when you're talking like it's like music to my ears because we mm -hmm. hear like efficiency that's what we want in in technology mm -hmm. i mean the stupidest little things right like you know auto responders or um mm -hmm. like lately i've been uh, doing uh, signatures of all kinds because I speak to audiences on social media of different platforms. Mm -hmm. I speak to them over my email list. I speak to them, you know, uh, just on a regular basis to my clients yeah. and my mm -hmm. signatures change. Like we don't need the same signature. And so now I just keyboard shortcut something. I can type three letters and I'll fill in, you know, the exact right. signature I want, you know, right. or call to action, call to engagement or you know, things yeah. like that. Like, I love that. Like, I can do that on my <laughs> computer. I can do that on my phone. Like, yeah. just a few years ago, that was, like, that was like a really hard thing. Like, you know, we couldn't mm -hmm. adapt. And now, like, we could be texting or something like that. I could just hit three letters and my whole entire um, signature for, like, uh, my brokerage mm -hmm. and my license right. number and all that. So it all gets filled out, like, every time. So, exactly. so we love efficiency. So it's not about that but the ability to do that is like super like exciting for me like oh my god well, I have to type everything and i think for you what i've noticed too is like it's like it's being efficient and then what do you do with all the extra time you used to have which i see you do like the um your videos of um, your live outdoor see it's like more time outdoors right and so like it's, there's efficiency related to something that's a benefit and so yeah. the benefit is how do you utilize that extra time yeah and and um i i I can kind of speak for both of us a little bit, just knowing you a little bit, is that we all we all find people and social interactions like really, mm -hmm. really is is really the um, the main course, if you will, you yeah. know, because yeah. like, oh, my God, this is what we came for. Like all the rest of the stuff is just to help support to get us exactly. there. We exactly. want that connection and everything. And I, I think that's why I do the lives. I do the lives. Mm -hmm you know, here in the interview, as well as, you know, some of the uh, lives on stories and things like that, mm -hmm. is that we all want that human connection. And um, now that video is everywhere on every platform, we're mm -hmm. allowed to do that, you know, yeah. I mean, just a few years ago was like really difficult. And so um, COVID has been hard for a lot of people, but one of the great things, and, and a lot of people highlight the great things of COVID, and this is one of the great things is that it's forcing people to like, hey, there's all this video technology and all you have to do is just hit a few buttons and then you can get right in front of somebody and you can talk, you know, in real time. Where right. I mean, we all knew that that existed, but nobody wanted to use it. Like they were like, oh, yeah, I'd rather fair. be in front of somebody. And so we ended up like commuting like a half hour, an hour. We don't yeah. realize how much time we spend on the road until all this happened. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I do, I do value in-person connections, and I definitely feel that there is a different um, a psychological or cognitive thing that um, happens when you meet somebody in person. But to your point about COVID and um, kind of utilizing more uh, video conferencing, uh, we, uh, at least for myself and, and with my family and friends, uh, we were, we stayed in touch a lot more often, right? Because typically video conferencing is for work, right? You only do it for work. You only FaceTime for whatever it is. It's all work related. And we have all these um, things that we're too busy to, to kind of uh, engage each other with. And with lockdown, while very unfortunate and um, uh, kind of a scary situation for everyone, right, um, dealing with that, uh, 
it, it felt like it felt like for me it fostered our deeper relationships with family and mm -hmm. you know constant con contact and yeah. um and then um more proactiveness actually towards getting these together getting these zoom calls together right um so that we can minimum interact on a uh, visual basis mm -hmm. which never happened before yeah, <laughs> you think about it like why <laughs> yeah, i know like oh that's all i had to do just click a few buttons and i like right there yeah. you know so but you're absolutely right like on um, the positivity uh the positive side of what's happened mm -hmm. you know through this um is allowing us to check in with each other mm -hmm. a lot more than we used to right we all want to yep. like hey are you okay everything good like especially mm -hmm. parents and people who are a little bit older um mm -hmm. but then we also the other positive side is that uh, we cherish now even more so the face-to-face -face interaction than we ever had before because when we go to get in front of somebody now that's super special like that's right. like so special right so Absolutely. grateful grateful for all of that mm -hmm. um yeah. so i i want to talk about you know, your your company and what you do mm -hmm. so um first like can you tell can you kind of share um how you came up with the the idea and then we can dig into like the meat and bones of like how yeah. that actually works yeah so um as i mentioned before uh this was kind of almost in the making like my 10 years or ish 10 ish years actually of corporate world is um i job hop a lot and typically back then job hopping was not necessarily a good thing to do but uh but it allowed me to hone in on um understanding transferable skills uh take my skills elsewhere in different industries and learn different industries which is really important to me and so my business just came about understanding uh, and this is probably the connector in me is looking at patterns of how can I help other people um, transition and transition from, especially in a, in the job market that's constantly changing because, you know, technology is evolving it, the economy is evolving it. So there's a lot of different ways the job market is evolving. So how do you make it, a, how do you evolve it, but also allow for a deeper connection with uh, companies and candidates? And so that's that's kind of where it came about. So there's a very huge data component that's tied to all this to um, to essentially model uh, data properly so that when we evolve individually um, and also economically, and uh, we can see that um, see that transition or see the the possibilities of paths. And so that's kind of where it all started is um, looking at that data model. So but if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so um, just so that I understand it a little bit better. So uh, you were job hopping and because mm -hmm. of that, you were seeing like, hey, um, when I job hop and I just think that like a lot of people job hop and when they do, they, the reason they're doing it is they, they want, you know, a little bit better job, a little bit better pay, but then they're also exploring at the mm -hmm. same time, like until they land something like, oh my God, this is it. And I want to stay here for a long time. And then they're not as uh, mm -hmm. not thinking about job hopping as much, but to get to that dream job, if you will, to mm -hmm. get to that dream job, there is kind of a path to kind of like, you know, get there. Um, and they all, everybody always want the next job to be better than the last one, either in pay in location in benefits or whatever. And without that data component of like keeping track of where you are, where you've been, what you did do plus when you are interviewing for a job for example you have all that data to show like here's all the things that i did so you're kind of documenting mm -hmm. your job hub. yeah is that kind of like what we're talking about a little bit so yeah so i was always manually um i had a process as i moved from job to job and it's actually not uncommon in the tech space to transition uh to have a short tenure uh at companies mainly because there's a a lot of um, opportunities from a, a technical standpoint to, to find uh, new opportunities. But it was, yeah, it was something along those lines. Um, specifically why I kind of went down this path was there is uh, at least pre-COVID, and I still think it's the same, same exists, was that uh, a lot of people are trying to transition into technology from uh, so many different spaces. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but, seeing the seeing the similarities 
between two sides was hard. So if you're an accountant and you decide you want to be a developer, right? Or if you're a, um, a hairstylist and you suddenly want to be a digital marketer, right? Being yeah. able to see just different types of roles that actually do have some comparisons and skills and in, whether it's tangible skills or intangible skills and being able to speak to them, mm. right? And especially um, supporting those that are trying to kind of what to your point, right? Transition into a better opportunity. And especially when you look at the un underserved market that are working towards that, it's like they're not coming from a traditional background where they're paying for that college degree and then, you know, their masters and, you know, just transitioning naturally, right, to um, a high paying role. You know, they are working several jobs, right? And they're trying to, um, while trying to get an education to, um, to land maybe a tech job or whatever that, whatever that skilled role is. And so it, it looks like there's a gap there where it's like they're not, um, capable or they're not, they don't look, I guess a better way of saying it's favorable, but in reality, they actually have a lot more than um, people give them credit for. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm working towards is distilling that information into um, less of the traditional methods of what are you looking for in a candidate? Yeah, awesome. I love that because um, I love what you said about being underserved because it is very underserved because there's the traditional path of um, uh, an, an academic path, right? Yes. And those are like clearly laid out for, you know, mm -hmm. so many years and all your parents want you to, you know, go through the oh, yeah. uh, academic I did, path. I, I did it. <laughs> yeah. And that's what they, that's what the, they know. And that's what they know works as long as you work hard and you work through your degrees and mm -hmm. things like that. Like you'll right. be, you know, uh, get your master's and post-grad, your doctorate, whatever it is, that's the more traditional path. But now I see that more and more people are more like self-taught. They're more, mm -hmm. um, uh, they're more on the fly. Um, I, I'll just speak for myself. I didn't go to school for um, any of the technology and I mm -hmm. literally picked up, you know, books and manuals on operating system, on networking, on, um, on all kinds of, you know, hardware technology. And then uh, later into more operating system and software and networking. Yeah. Uh, when we say networking, networking <laughs> the case of wired systems. Yeah. Systems, right? <laughs> and so um, I, I mean, these books were literally like you know this thick, mm -hmm. and um, I would just come home every day and two three hours a day, and I just look through them, and yeah. then I would go back to work, and I would test everything that I worked on, like oh this is how it works. Um, right. So it's very like a very like a self taught thing, and I just feel like more and more people are doing that and I'll and for me at that time there wasn't any like formal schools and degrees for that when I was doing it you know mm -hmm. and the the books that were coming out faster than any classes could have been um, made available for it yep. so I think as we continue to have this kind of speed of mm -hmm. technology growing like the stuff that you know um, that was came out last year it's almost like could be obsolete today you know, Correct. and so yeah. you couldn't like go to a four year degree on something that's becoming obsolete. Yeah. So the speed of things like requires mm -hmm. you to be uh, self taught um, more, um, more, uh, more of a street smart to kind of learn, you know, mm -hmm. on your own and have some discipline to actually do that, you know, and learn on your right. own. And now there's so much um, education and classes like online that are recorded, like you can go through yeah. that, you know, yourself. And and there's so much free classes and if people are able to um you know whether it's paid or free if they're learning and they're able to um do then why is it not valued as much right and why why is it a a, a harder a harder search or harder placement and so um yeah to your point that they're, they're uh, we're, we're rapidly evolving the internet has helped with that um, however, I, I think that there are um, uh, improvements to be made on the um, job market space to rapidly evolve with with that with the changing times of the changing mentality. And so that's the hope of what I'm trying to do. And why gaming specifically is uh, gaming, uh, I realized last year, a game specific game development uh, really taps into psychology, which I love. I love learning about psychology, human behavior, all that fun stuff. And as you um, think about 
game design, which I started doing COVID, I uh, actually started learning to actually do game design and code, code myself. Um, there's very specific ways you build to elicit certain actions, which is very psychological in nature. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why I kind of went into, uh, we, you know, we redirected into the gaming space, which is a very relevant space uh, uh, tied to the job market. I mean, that I could go on forever about the psychology of that stuff because oh, yeah. uh, that's a whole everything in life is it's all a game of some sort, you know, so I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. And we uh, all want to win our games. Yeah, we all want to win. Even if it's a small win, doesn't matter, a small win or a big win, win, we all want to win those games. And, you know, I know in, in real estate and sales, like every mm -hmm. interaction I have, it's like a game. Like, what do you want? Mm -hmm. How do I get it to you? Does that make sense? You know, that kind yeah. of thing. And, the, and yeah. you know, winning at the end is like, you know, they win because they get what they want. I win because I was able to facilitate that and get paid for it. So, um, yeah. but I love that. I love that 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 game. Um, I think people think uh, gaming is like, oh, you know, you're on your um, your Xbox and stuff like that. But it goes, you know, quite a, quite a bit beyond that. I think. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So now in tech, um, uh, I want to talk more about the more specifically the women in initiatives that you. Mm -hmm um are passionate about but before we get to that like for your company specifically can you mm -hmm. just describe for people out there listening um what kind of candidates are you getting and how do they how do you walk them through a process that your company mm -hmm. provides so we are um we're still building and so we're uh pre-launch at the moment uh and we're working towards uh building a platform that is um for companies to use. So it's actually a B2B business that they can invite their candidates or talent that they're looking to um, assess into a game. And then what they do is literally play that game. And then we provide insights behind the, the interaction between the two sides. And so okay. that's so that's what we're working towards. Okay, so a company might be uh, hiring um, mm -hmm. and uh, they might engage with you and say, hey, you know, we want to find, you know, uh, best candidates possible, of course. Um, and then you would take over from there and and um, and kind of go through the candidate. Is that how I'm understanding it? No, no. So what we uh, what so what we're focused on mainly is just the games themselves okay. and providing insights. So we're not a sourcer. So typical uh, HR tools are more around sourcing and a recruitment tools are around like finding the talent. So we're not focused on that just yet mm -hmm. but with uh the data modeling that we're looking towards and actually building we can work towards that but right now we're focused on the game we're we're focused more on the interaction and mainly because i noticed that um and being being an employer myself uh, so i got to play both sides interviewer and interviewee right and it's it's an uncomfortable situation right it's like you know trying to get to know each other trying to, you know, put your best foot forward, trying to, you know, understand whether or not this is the right fit. And so um, building it into an interactive environment to be able to see if the interaction is not just by um, Q and A, but actually through play, right? Actually play through it, see how you interact, see if, see if this is a collaborative, um, collaborative interaction, see if that uh, is if it's eliciting a leadership that you're looking for, whatever it is, Right, it's the interaction it, that it's um, uh, what we're working towards as opposed to the typical question and answer. And so we're actually, uh, games is just something I'm implementing everywhere um, because I'm just now like, this is all about games. And uh, I think I mentioned to you before, we're doing a, a video series, which is uh, um, to uh, open up dialogue and get to know professionals for both, um, for who they are rather than what they do. And so the video series is called Pop, People Over Profession. And the idea is just to have a conversation about who you are rather than what you do. Because what we do can change um, as we kind of life cycle through our careers. But who we are uh, typically is grounded in certain values. Mm -hmm. And so we, so I, it's a simple format. It's one question and one game. And so the game elicits a whole, a whole other way to understand the person. And so again, games everywhere for me. <laughs> so your so your candidates would be provided for you by a company's HR, um, and you you provide the data back after you had time to 
yeah. uh, go through these uh, games with the candidates. Yeah, we're simply a tool. We're simply a tool to provide um, to support in the interviewing process. So they, they would, if I'm HR and be like, oh, I need to hire three people. Uh, we've got a candidate of 10 people. You would uh, provide them data from your from your gaming and your video um, interview series, then from there, they would be able to determine better, they would have more information to decide who would be best fit for their company and, right. and, and, and use you as a, as a resource to be able to determine that. Yeah, correct. Great, yeah. I, I'm glad yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, tell me, let's, let's talk a little more about the uh, Women Initiative. Um, as you know, there's a, there's a big campaign going on right now, you know, with with women uh, posting their black and white photos. So I, I saw that. Very, very, very <laughs> appropriate. I know you're probably yeah. not on social media as much, but now I, I see have. It like everywhere, which is super awesome. I I love it. You know, love it when people can um, stand up and then support. You know, among each other, uh, women mm -hmm. in the profession and um, just uh, basic social values, which we all we all I think um, is very needed. Yeah. Uh, so um, when I was thinking about women, women's initiatives, and I think it's just uh, me as a community leader and just community builder, it's about supporting supporting each other. So whether it's women supporting women or women empowering women, um, entrepreneurs supporting entrepreneurs, right? It's just everyone supporting each other and to points like social values, right? Um, so that we can um, help build each other rather than um, break each other down. And I think one of the things that I've been most uh, mostly thinking about lately, especially women's initiatives, is um, society's norms. And so I, I've I've kind of dealt with it in my own ways. Where and like I said, um, my cultural norms of like stay on the traditional nine to five path, keep that job, all that stuff, right? Versus um, you know really just choosing to do what feels right for you, right? And every person is different. And so um, just being able to support people's decisions, you know, uh, and so that they can move towards uh, whatever, you know, whatever their path leads them to do. And um, we, we struggle with that a little bit because we struggle with that because we are pressured by what society wants us to do, right? What, what, what they want versus what, you know, what you, you personally want. And, um, and I think that that's the one thing that we can do better at is rather than telling people what they should do is asking them what they're interested in doing, right? Listen, right? And so I think that's the thing that um, we can do a lot more in just in general is listen. Yeah. You know? Well, I love that. And one of the things that's been on my mind a lot, you know, these, these last couple of weeks is this, this phrase. It's, you know, when, whenever I enter any kind of um, interaction or relationship of any mm -hmm. kind, I always want, I always want win win or no deal okay win win or no deal win, <laughs> like win, that no deal like so if i go into you know a client situation and um if it's a win lose situation then then we have no deal because i want i want i want to win for what i want to do but i also want you to win and i think I think we overlook that too much, you know, because there's been so much competition over the years in many forms yeah. in industry that we forget that, hey, we can actually both win, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it, that can happen way more often than we think because we're just not right. thinking about it. We're just thinking about like, hey, I want to win. I don't care if you if you do or not. If you do, that's your business. But I think right. it, it behooves all of us when it wins on both sides and then that like really comes together and, and makes everything um, super special. And, uh, yeah. and and when we can have that kind of momentum, then we can have win-win more and more and more. Um, yeah. And I think I think it's overlooked. I think we're thinking too small. Like, um, and, and we're, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Uh, it's just too easy to do like, oh, this is what I'm trying to do. And so, you know, I, I don't worry about other people, but when we, right when we can collaborate and can 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 do that together, then when the two wins happen, then we want like more of it, you know? Right, exactly. It's really contagious. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's lonely to win by yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it's like um, kind of like winning is um, kind of being okay with your own decisions and then um, someone else's decisions as well and finding a happy medium. 
because I know like for myself, entrepreneurship isn't necessarily um, for everybody, um, for everyone in my circle or family and friends, right? But um, it's learning to accept each other, you know? And so you can all win, right? As long as you can learn to accept each other's decisions, right? And so I think there, there could be a win-win, but um, it's understanding and at least trying to understand is, is the biggest thing. Right. And, yeah. and Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I cut you off. I was gonna say, and I was gonna say, um, and you, you know, you're kind of saying that we need a lot more of that in society. Yeah, and and uh, and to your point, uh, winning looks different for everybody. Absolutely. So, so we don't always have to have equal wins. Like, hey, if I want a hundred dollars and you only want twenty dollars, hey, you get your twenty dollars, I get my hundred dollars, and everybody wins, or vice versa, right? Yeah. So, so I think that to your point is that it's very dynamic, and it's mm -hmm. just really about fulfilling what people's needs are and if he only wants twenty dollars and that makes him like happier than ever then mm -hmm. um, who's who are we to decide he should have more or less you know exactly right? yeah so, yeah great yeah um so um how, what else would you like to share about your company that you think everybody yeah. would be would, should know Ooh, um play more games, <laughs> play more games. in general yeah. Yeah. um okay. i think the one thing that um when one of the bigger missions and again it's um while games and products um uh game products are is what we're delivering as um as a business uh the, we have a larger mission which is um really looking at creating more diversity and inclusion in the job market mm -hmm. and so it's kind of kind of to your point win-win or no deal and so we we want to we are a win-win we want to believe in a win-win mentality so uh, on both sides, because I think the employers can win and I think candidates can win, employees can win. Um, but it's kind of coming to that place where we can all um, have that conversation uh, around winning together. Yeah, I think the more that we can spread the message, which we are doing right now, you know, getting on live here and mm -hmm. um, uh, being able to get in front of people and uh, be able to spread that message, um, the more the better, because it's not uh, just because you win doesn't mean there's a loser on the other side right nope. you know so so absolutely so you're uh, tell us about what's going on right now with your company and what what are we looking forward to you know in the next either coming months and things like that where's your like big landmark Ooh, um we are uh right now let me, let me think through that one uh, we will be launching our pop series very soon. So pop video series, which is people over profession, that'll come out in the next month or so. And so if anyone is interested in uh, being part of the video series, again, it's all for me, it's about um, connecting as many professionals in a new way of networking, which is uh, being able to share what their values are, uh, and uh, play a game. And so it, it teaches me something, because I learned so much from every guest that comes on but it gives you an opportunity to kind of share who you are again rather than what you do because we're more than just what we do so it's, uh, a, it's a video yeah. series that you work that you work okay and so mm -hmm. if people um have an interest in it then um they can uh, i know we have links here in the post and everything so yeah. they can contact you and um yep. uh, you, you can uh, kind of go through the process and see if they can be involved in, in being absolutely part of it. okay yeah um and then um Outside of that, we're just, we're building the, we have the games actually, we're building the platform out. And so that should be coming out fairly soon. I don't have set dates on that one, um, but I'm looking for, yeah, more people to connect with at the end of the day. I think I, um, I personally learn I, as a super connector. I just like connecting with people. Yeah, um, so so yeah, people will come to you, you, you get them involved in the game and then you get to get to know them you know, in the game, in the videos, um, and then gather um, their personal information. I don't want to say personal information, but information about who they are, because it just naturally comes out during interaction, right? Right. And anyone who's interested in um, really uh, making, I, I'm calling it resetting the job market. And I think COVID and the pandemic has allowed us to slow down a bit, uh, because we've been, um, uh, the mark, job market in general has just shifted significantly, yeah. but um, but yeah, resetting the job market to add some humanity into it um, through both through policy, you know, through conversation, but also through policy and um, yeah, a better um, better partnerships.
to yeah. to focus on human capital. And and more and more opportunity for everybody, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, great. I'm I'm so glad that I I was able to come you on. I appreciate you coming on and yeah. uh, talking about your business and talking about um, these things. I think it's a super super great idea. Um, I'd love to support you in any way possible. Appreciate um, that. Yeah, and um, so everybody, if you guys want to play a game and get to know <laughs> not only yourself but also uh, be a, be able to be in position to you know for your next job or whatever, I think this is a, a great. A platform that you're building for people who who are looking to or uh, in the future about what uh, their next mm -hmm. job or what they might be thinking maybe they're changing jobs and they want to explore you know uh, what kind mm -hmm. of things that they might be interested in right yeah definitely definitely great yeah. and so uh, as per tradition um, mm -hmm. we always ask our guests um, a quote that they like to share with everybody so yeah. take it away I'm excited because it's actually my own quote <laughs> that yeah, I had I shared that. with somebody a while back. Um, and it, uh, so the quote is, um, they're rarely original ideas, only ideas that become reality. And so um, the, the meaning behind the quote, at least for me, is it's entrepreneurship, right? There's a ton of ideas out there. There's a ton of you know different directions you can go in, but until it becomes reality, you know, um, they're just ideas. And so um, that's kind of what I'm doing with my company and kind of direction of my own life is I'm making it a reality. Yeah, amazing. Um, I would love to use that quote for one of our um, Wisdom Club posts. Um, that yeah, definitely. Up and um, share it one day. Um, but you're absolutely right. I, I think uh, you, hit the, you hit the nail on the head there because um, it's always about the ideas, you know, mm -hmm. um, it blows my mind like everywhere you look if you think about it everywhere you look everything that you see that exists today that was made by human beings mm -hmm. were all originated from an idea so there had to be a thought of something you know mm -hmm. a wheel on you know fire you know yeah amazing technologies like computers and cell phones and mm -hmm. things like that all came from idea after idea after idea so I always have to you know start there and so like I encourage people to like hey if you have an idea like it starts up here and then how do you feel about that idea and if you feel really great about that idea you should take some action so it's always idea exactly. emotion how you feel about it and taking action because if you don't feel good about that idea you're not going to take action or yeah. if you do take action like you might you might not feel so good about it because like well why am i even doing this because you know, yeah. it feel right so i always try to connect those things idea feelings and action idea feelings and action yeah it's and a very good comes, thing yeah. i like to time box it too and it's a, i read it from a, um somebody's i can't remember who but give yourself 30 days to feel that out you yeah. know and um and then let that go because mm -hmm. i have 10 years i have a book that i write my ideas in for 10 years i've been doing this this is why wow. i knew i need to be an entrepreneur Amazing. and so i ton of ideas but eventually only one becomes a reality or maybe two in the book right and so you just got to write them down and let them go and then actually find where your reality is yeah and, and make that decision right like in the 30 mm -hmm. days like hey i'm gonna make a decision on this yeah. uh so that it doesn't just hang out there forever I can make exactly. this easy. Yes or no. Like yes, like you 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 know pay it forward, but um, yeah. I think there's so many great people out there with so many great ideas that absolutely don't end up, um, you know, um, becoming reality as you say. You know, mm -hmm. until they make up that decision, you know, to to you know move forward. And this yeah. is what I appreciate about our conversation here with you because like you're the like perfect example of like have the idea like this is how I can help people and it's an underserved um, part of the world um, just like there's so many things that's been underserved um, but it takes somebody like you to take it on right yeah, yeah. So. and I and I and I encourage anyone who has an idea to um, surround yourselves with people that want to challenge you on your idea because that just strengthens your um, your thought process more mm -hmm. right to being able to challenge yourself so yeah definitely don't don't shy away from that yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you're like the perfect um, entrepreneurs that I love having on the show because like we are pure and pure like, hey, it's about ideas and um, making it. a reality. Making yeah, just do it. 
So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, and I really enjoyed this conversation. I um, hope you guys all enjoyed it too. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, we're both um, tagged on this uh, live stream. And so we'll be able to circle back. And if you want to reach out, of course, all the links are in the post. Uh, please go there and check it out. Um, send a send a tweet to uh, to Van if you want to, and uh, you know reach out and see if um, there could be a good fit uh, for you know helping you on your current job or your future job, um, whatever it is that you're trying to do and create that win win. So awesome. again, this is Wisdom Club Live, and uh, we here are trying to inspire unlimited possibilities every day. So um, I will see you again on the next one. Have a great night, everybody, and thank you again, Van. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Good night, everybody.